Welcome to Sapphire One. Today I'm demonstrating how to enter a cash payment. This is the first data entry item on the Payables menu in the Accounts mode of Sapphire One. If you haven't seen the Navigating Modes movie, you can access the Accounts mode by selecting it from the drop-down menu here on the left side of the screen. This activates the account menus, so I can now choose Payables from the toolbar. As with the majority of menus in Sapphire 1, the first items listed are data entry items. These are followed by the inquiry screens, posting, and then the reporting functions. The first data entry item in Payables is Cash Payment, and when I select it, a new Cash Payment data entry screen appears on my desktop. Predominantly, the data entry screens in Accounts mode have been divided into four main areas. On the left, we have the transaction and destination areas, and to the right, there's the management review and standing transaction areas. The transaction area is where you enter the details that relate to this particular transaction. The first field in this area is invoice number, and this is where you enter the invoice number provided to you by the vendor. Directly below, we have check number. This is where you enter the number of the check you will be issuing to the vendor. The number is automatically generated from within Sapphire 1, but can also be modified. Total is where we enter the amount of the payment, and this time, I'll enter $200. For date in, Sapphire 1 inserts the current date by default. You can change this if you like, by entering another date directly into this field, or by selecting the calendar button to the right, and choosing a date from the pop-up. Under this is period. By default, Sapphire 1 enters the current period. However, within Sapphire 1, you can have up to 30 active periods. To select an alternative, use the interval button to the right of the field. You can then choose which period you would like the payment to be processed in. I'm happy with the current period, so I'll leave it as is. Paid from displays which bank account the payment will be made from. This defaults to the main bank account. However, I can change this to a different account if I choose. See how the field is blue. Wherever there's a blue field in Sapphire 1, it means you can use the at symbol on your keyboard to search the database. So when I enter the at symbol and hit the return key on a Mac, or the enter key on a PC, a pop-up list appears with all my bank accounts, and I simply select the one I need. The next item is the check done tick box. You can tick this if you have already provided a check and don't wish this payment to appear on the checks to be printed list. Payee is where you enter the details of the vendor whom this payment is for. The final field in the transaction area is memo. You can enter any relevant notes in this field and by selecting this clock button, Sapphire 1 will timestamp and date the memo for you. Before I discuss the next area, I'll just take a moment to explain the paperclip. The paperclip displays how many electronic documents have been attached to this particular transaction. When I click on it, it brings up my document storage window where I can open any existing attachments or add or delete documents to or from the transaction. Now let's take a look at the destination area. This is where you choose which general ledger accounts the transaction will be applied to. To add a line, select the plus button at the bottom of the screen. The first line of the destination area is now grey, and the account number, project and tax code fields are blue. Remember, whenever you see a blue field, it means you can use the at symbol to search your data file. When I enter the at symbol into the account field, and hit either the return key on a Mac or the enter key on a PC, I'm presented with a list of all my general ledger accounts. Now I simply select the account I want. This is great because it means I don't have to remember the numbers assigned to each individual account. I'll select the first expense account from the list and now my cash payment tells me that the item I've purchased is for a building cost. Let's say that the item costs $100. So I'll enter that figure into the Net Amount field. Next we have our tax fields. They are Tax Code. This automatically defaults to the code that has been set up in the general ledger for this particular account. I can change this if I like, 
And because the box is blue, I can also use the at symbol to display a list of all the tax codes set up in this database. Next we have tax percent, which is linked to tax code, and then the amount of tax that will be applied to this purchase. The last box is the total amount for this line. Next we have the project field. If you have a specific job project that you want to report on, you can also allocate the total or a percentage of the cash payment to that project. This means you can run profit and loss statements at the project level and once again, because the field is blue, it's searchable. I'll select the first project on the list and allocate 100% of this purchase to it. I'll now add another item to the transaction. This time, instead of using the plus button, I'll use the keyboard shortcut, command forward slash on a Mac or control forward slash on a PC to bring up a new line. I now need to enter the general ledger account for this item. Last time, when I used just the at symbol, Sapphire 1 presented me with a quite long list. So rather than viewing the entire chart of accounts, and since I know that my expense accounts all start with the number 6, I'll enter the number 6 followed by the at symbol and I now get a reduced list that displays only my expense account. This time, I'll select the second account from the list and again, I'll say the item costs $100. I've entered my items and I now want to save my data entry. Notice how the green tick on the toolbar is greyed out. This means that Sapphire 1 won't let me save the transaction. The reason for this is it's out of balance. And if I look at the bottom of my screen, Sapphire 1 tells me that my data entry is $20 out of balance. So either I need to add $20 to the total I entered in the transaction area earlier, or I need to adjust the amounts of the items I've purchased. Let's say the amount for each item was tax inclusive and the total amount of $200 is correct. Instead of entering the price in the amount field for each line, I enter it into the total field and let Sapphire 1 calculate the tax for me. Now my out of balance amount is zero, my green tick has become active, and when I select it, Sapphire 1 accepts and closes the transaction. Let's say that I've forgotten to add something to the transaction and I need to reopen it. From the Payables menu, I'll select Transaction Inquiry, which brings up a list of all my current transactions. The transaction I just entered is here at the top. There are two ways to open a transaction in Sapphire 1. The first method is Look. To do this, I can either select the Look button here on the toolbar, or I simply double click on the transaction itself. When the window opens, I'm able to look at the information, but I can't change anything. The second method is Modify. To do this, I either select the Modify button here on the toolbar, or I can use the keyboard shortcut Command M on a Mac or Control M on a PC. Now when the window opens, I'm able to make changes to the transaction. Sapphire 1 also allows you to customize the user preferences for each person who has access to your data file. So if you would prefer to double click to modify a transaction, you can. I need to modify my cash payment as I want to make this transaction a standing transaction. This is the standing transactions area and it's where I can automate Sapphire 1 to reissue the same transaction periodically. By selecting the schedule drop down, I'm provided with a list of standard timeframes such as monthly, fortnightly, weekly and so on. If none of these suit, there is also an other option which allows me to enter the exact number of days between each payment. I'll say this transaction needs to be repeated every 10 days. Sapphire 1 then asks me for a stop date for the periodic transaction, let's say November 30. Sapphire 1 will now produce a cash payment for $200 every 10 days until the 30th of November, and these transactions will appear in the transaction posting screen for my approval prior to posting. Another field which also advises users of the status of a transaction is the tag field located at the bottom of the screen. I can tag a transaction to let others know whether it can be posted yet or if there is a reason for it to be placed on hold. So far, we've looked at the transaction, destination and standing transaction areas. The final area of this data entry screen is the management review window 
or the Management Review tabs. These tabs provide an insight into the relationship between this transaction and the parts of the data file that it affects. The first tab is Bank. This displays the bank account details of the account that you have selected for the payment to be made from. The Control tab tells you who entered the transaction, if any changes have been made to the transaction, whether it's been posted or bank reconciled and so forth. The GL tab provides you with details of the general ledger accounts that this transaction is destined for. When a transaction has been linked to a particular project, you can view the details of that project in the Projects tab. If the transaction is linked to a client or vendor, such as in a client invoice, the Transactions tab will bring up a list of the last 100 transactions or so. However, this is a cash payment so nothing is displayed. And the final tab is Error Code. This displays any areas of the transaction that did not validate within Sapphire 1. So that finalizes our cash payment data entry screen. I hope this was helpful and thank you for watching.